Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, I'll be wrapping up my Type X conversion by fitting the rest of the ground effects. Over the last few videos, I've basically been installing all of my original Nissan JDM parts to convert my 89 240SX over to a Kuki Generation 180SX Type X. Now I talked about what all of that entails over the past few videos, so if you haven't had a chance to check them out yet, please do so. There's a lot of really good information there. I've got some links in the description below. I really appreciate it. We're at a very exciting and pivotal point of this build where the body is finally starting to come together. Everything is looking really, really awesome. And as you can see, I've already started fitting some of the ground effects because it's a bit of a learning process to say the least, especially when it came to fitting the three-piece rear valence. So I'm at a good point right now where I can go ahead and show you where I'm at, then I'm going to take things apart, work on final assembly and all of that good stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's first turn our attention to the side skirts because this is probably the trickiest part of this whole install because there's a lot of drilling involved. So if you were going to mount this to the car like the factory would have, there's a whole bunch of clips that you're going to have to get. Some push clips, some screw clips, some specialty clips, and um, of course some uh, double-sided tape. I'll show you all this stuff in just a second, but as you can see along the bottom edge of the side skirt here, you would attach that below the rocker panel. So you would have to drill a hole underside, put this clip in, and then have a screw that goes in through the bottom. But these right here are your push clips. So you still gotta drill holes, you still gotta put the piece that goes into the body, but that just presses into it and locks in place. The specialty stuff is here, it just holds the back of the side skirt to the rear quarter, and at the very top edges you have um, some areas for some uh, double-sided sticky tape. Thankfully, there's two holes up here that at least line up with you know, the only two holes that are already in my body, and that was for the factory mud flaps. So, with how this goes together, this screws up front, the back portion of the side skirt clips into the extension right here, and then those two clips back there hold it to the rear quarter, and that at least gets you kinda in the ballpark of where the side skirt is going to sit, so you can start doing the measuring and preparation for drilling. Now I can't remember who posted this, but I found an old forum post where somebody tracked down what type of original hardware that you needed to do this, and then they found a vendor in the United States where you could buy this stuff in bulk. It's called Clips and Fasteners, so big thanks to them for doing all of that work. But these are the two push clips right here. You've got this style, and this style, and this is the receiving end, so once this clips into the back of the side skirt, you just press it in and it locks in place. These right here, you drill the holes underneath the rocker panel, put those in, and then screw the side skirt in from underneath. These are replacement ones for um, where the factory mud flaps went, and of course the screws that go with those, they're just a little bit smaller than those, so um, just something to be aware of. These are the specialty clips that I had to order directly from Nissan. That's the part number right there. Those are the clips that hold that section to the rear quarter. Not a very expensive part, but a little expensive on shipping from uh, Japan. But we've got everything we need right here to go ahead and start uh, getting some drilling done. Now I haven't drilled any holes for the rear section of this side skirt yet, but I have fully mounted the extension, so you can get somewhat of an idea of what I'm going to be doing. At the very front, you've got the existing screw holes for the factory mud flaps. Again, the yellow ones already in the fender are the push clips, and then underside, you've got the screw clips. As you can see, those push clips just slide into the U-shaped housings. Thank you. 
All right, the extension is mounted, feels very solid, and of course it's level, so you can't ask for much more than that. I'm gonna go ahead and move on now to fitting the rear section of the side skirt, but I also wanna mention, I'm not gonna be using the double-sided tape, I'm not gonna be using every single clip required, my main focus in this video is to get all of my holes drilled and make sure everything lines up. Since because my car is not ready for body and paint, all of this stuff is gonna have to come back off and I don't wanna go and waste a whole bunch of clips. So we're gonna get this stuff mounted good enough to where it's held on the car. We're gonna get all of the holes drilled, double check everything to where when it's time for final assembly, it's just a matter of putting in all the rest of the clips and it'll be nice and easy. Now it's time to drill some holes. It's definitely nice being able to do this up in the air, but my lift arms are blocking a couple of the holes that I need to drill, so I'll at least mark them for now and just tackle them later. All of those holes were pilot holes to make it a little easier. Now I'm gonna take the skirt back off, drill it out to the proper size, and put a couple clips in. I just sprayed a little temporary paint over the exposed holes so nothing will rust. Once that's dried, we'll put those clips in. Well, that's looking pretty good if I do say so myself. I don't have any of the push clips in on this side, so that's gonna be the next task, but I also don't have the double-sided tape up there, so the top edges aren't gonna be like totally flush with the body, but it is pretty dang close. So now I'm gonna show you my little trick with figuring out where to drill the holes for the push clips. My buddy Joe taught me this a little while back. I take some anti-seize on a glove, and just dap it around all of these little U-shaped holes. I can then press the side skirt back up to the body, and as long as there's enough anti-seize or paint or whatever, I'm just using anti-seize, um, it should leave a nice little print on the body to where I can easily pinpoint where I need to drill. Just need to give the skirt a nice firm press up against the body without trying to slide it so you don't distort the anti-seize. Now let's see how it did. Nice. Pretty much perfect. This is exactly what I was hoping to see. They're actually more like C's instead of sideway U's, but you know what I'm talking about. Went a little heavy on the anti-C's on that one and a little bit light on the forward one, but that's okay. I've got just enough to know where I need to pinpoint these clips and start drilling. I was getting ready to line this side skirt back up on the car. I've got the little push clips all in place and I noticed a few of the mounting tabs were broken. And then I started looking a little bit more and there was two broken on that extension, one broken on that other side skirt, so I had to glue and set everything and it's just about ready. 
I know that extension is done, so while I wait on the other two pieces, let's go ahead and fit that one. While I let some paint dry on the other side, let's try to get this skirt fitted. Got one clip in the middle there. All right, the side skirts on this side are on and looking fantastic. All the body lines match up, the contours and everything are perfect, so I'm very, very happy. It'd be even better if this was for the final time, but it'll do for now. Looking good. Since you guys have a pretty good idea by now of my process with fitting these side skirts, I'm gonna go ahead and get this one attached so we can move on to talking about the rear valances. And there you have it, folks. I really don't wanna take these back off, but I'm going to because I wanna show you guys how it all went together. But let me tell you something, as tricky as it was to fit those side skirts, these valances were a lot harder. I, I don't know why. They're OEM parts, but I had to do some cutting here and there, stuff that you would never ever see if I didn't point it out, but the way I have it now, everything follows the curvature of the body and the lines absolutely perfect. So again, like the side skirts, the very top portions here, you would have a double-sided sticky tape, which I don't have right now. That's why it's drooping just a little bit back there. But, I mean, these, it, it took me two full days to figure this out. So, <laughs> let me go ahead and take them back off so I can show you guys what I did. I've seen prices on these original valences just absolutely skyrocket in the last couple of years. It's amazing. The trouble, not only with finding some, is finding some that don't already have some kind of imperfections. There's some little cracks here and there that need to be fixed. Not that big of a deal. I also had to make a couple of brackets that were missing. This one was perfectly fine. I'm still missing one right here, but it's got enough attachment points that it's not really a concern at the moment. This one was missing its attachment bracket here, so I ended up cutting a piece of aluminum, shaping it in a way. Probably took me an entire day just to get that little bracket figured out. It's kind of ridiculous, but it worked out pretty good. They also have, um, you know, double-sided sticky tape right there. But yeah, let's get them back on the car. I'm really not 100% sure how the factory attached the outer valences. I know the front two screws are the same screws that the factory um, mud flap would have attached to, but you've got these brackets down below here. Like I said, I had to make one for the other side, but the little bracket just slips on top of the bumper cover, so the only thing that I could think of was drill a small hole in the bumper cover and pass a nut and bolt through to basically sandwich the two together and it's very sturdy but 
I doubt that's the way the factory did it, but I have searched and searched and just came up with nothing. So if anybody more familiar with this knows, please feel free to comment below and educate me. I really appreciate it. I also had to do a little bit of light trimming with the bumper cover on both sides. With this curve of the valence, it just wasn't sitting right. I'm not sure if my bumper cover is a little bit warped from being old or bumped into. I know there's a little crack on the back side, so if um, that can't be repaired, I've got an extra bumper cover that I can swap this out of. So I didn't really feel too bad about trimming a little bit here and there just to kind of play with it a little bit, but I've got it pretty much perfect. Like, if I can't figure out a better way to go about attaching these corners, you know, this, this is totally fine. The only thing preventing it from being like super perfect is the double-sided sticky tape, which would hold that up just a little bit to put it right with the body line. Also, after a little bit of light trimming of the bumper cover, this one fits perfect as well. Nice curve. I've got a big dent in the car right here, so I can't make it go flat anyway, but with that double-sided tape, again, it'd be perfect. The center valence, thankfully, is self-explanatory because the majority of attachment points are already on the car. The center valence attaches to this metal brace right behind the bumper cover. I need to get some new plastic clips, but you've got the four brackets well, minus one, that are riveted to the valence. There's a little hook to hang it on that side. And on the far left, there's another bracket hidden inside there that's similar to the um, brackets in the outer valences. So I just had to put a little hole in the bumper cover with a nut and bolt, and that held it just fine. There's also one bracket on the outside of the valence. There is an existing hole in the bumper cover, but it, it's just a hole. It doesn't have a threaded insert. So I used one of my plastic fasteners that I used for securing the bottom of the side skirts. So that pressed in, and then I used a screw to hold it together. There's also this rub strip right here that I need to replace. It just prevents um, you know this from like rubbing against your paint and scratching it. I already replaced the ones right here, so that's on the to-do list, but for now, I say a job well done. Well, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Before we head out, though, check out these angles of the car out in the sun. It looks so, so good. I've waited a few years to finally get to this point, and it's come together just beautifully. I took the car out for a good drive. Nothing rubs. There's plenty of clearance. It's not too low, which was one thing I was kind of concerned about, especially with the lip out front. The car is like the perfect amount of functional low. I think the stance is fantastic and I could not be happier. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. This has been a, a very long process to say the least, but you know, good things take time and I'm, I'm, you know, everything happens for a reason. But if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so because there's always a lot more content where that came from. Until next time, I'll see you guys.